Hello everyone and welcome back to the perfect Fallout 4 playthrough. In this episode I want to show you how you can build a gunner trap uh, farm to farm experience. Uh, I actually made a video about this. It was one of the first videos on my channel. It was pretty cool. Uh, however, it was more entertainment and a lot of people wanted to know the actual process. So I'm just going to show you uh, more of the build here. For the first part, I'm building just the most narrow possible structure with these small concrete floors and then walls on either side. And basically, I'm going to set up the cages so that the gunners fall into the narrow channel. And when they're in the narrow channel, uh, it should be pretty easy to kill them. However, as I find out, this method works great if you have a very specific weapon which my current character on this playthrough does not have, which is the explosive minigun. So I'm gonna call this the explosive minigun version of the gunner trap. What you want is a long, narrow passage that you can fire the minigun into and it will just shred everything inside there. However, uh, without the explosive minigun, there's not a really good way to use this kind. Uh, the way I wanted to build this, I wanted to have around 100 cages, so I ended up building 16 gunner cages on one side, 16 on the other side, and then one on the end for a total of 33. And I ended up making it three layers high, so that ended up being a total of 99 cages. Now, I think this is just too deep for, uh, for killing them all effectively. I don't think I had that many gunner cages in my video. But you can see here I start stacking the layers, you put floors on top. You need to make sure that you wire the gunner cages before you put floors on top, otherwise the wires will not connect to each other. So make sure you wire them layer by layer before you start adding floors. So you see I'm wiring up all of them on the other side now, uh, connecting all the wiring. Then I start building my next set of floors on top. And getting the positioning right of the floors is very important. Uh, once I had everything built, I put a little picket fence on the end. And as you can see, I ended up with three layers. I created a little platform scaffolding structure here that could view down. I thought the angle was pretty good. It looks pretty good, but um, as you'll see, it doesn't work that well. I don't like having things looking like they're floating in space. So I made sure to add the scaffolding frames eventually. And I also built up the uh, bottom of the actual uh, gunner structure because it was kind of floating in the air as well so I added little cement things underneath I added walls to make it look like it would actually hold together um, although it looks like it would be insanely heavy so I don't know if this would be a solid structure actually um, but I felt like everything was good I was able to reach all of the cages from the outside which would let me repair them when they break uh, I had on the floors I had lights you know I was really happy with this structure and even though this isn't the one I ended up using, spoiler alert, I'm still very happy with how it looks and if you have an explosive minigun I think this is the way to go. This is the the coolest way to do it. See I get this super deep channel, super thin as well. Here you can see I try it out. So after about a week of sleeping the gunner cages should mostly be full. I open it up and one of the problems is the gunners don't like to walk out immediately. They just kind of sit there. So I was just waiting for them to come out. And uh, finally they drop out. And as you can see, I just get lit up and absolutely destroyed. Uh, <laughs> this was not a lot of fun. So I decided let's change weapons. Let's go big boy. Let's go party starter. Let's use big explosive weapons. And I thought this would work a lot better. Uh, Piper just wants to get in the way. So I just wanted to wait until they all fell out of their cages before I started shooting and I launched my big boy in there. I think one of the rounds hit the side there, the other one the other one went in, but uh, it just, you see they're still walking out. And I think the depth has a lot to do with it. I think if you're not in there a certain distance, then they don't come out of their cage. I'm not really sure, but they were behaving kind of weird. Then I started firing the missiles down and that was working okay. The one thing is I don't have a lot of safety here. I can get hit while I'm hitting them. It's pretty hard for me to just avoid them. I could put like a wall to hide behind or something and I actually tried that too, but in the end this was just too deep. Even when I got everything killed, I would still have to go inside and kill the rest of them in the back. I couldn't kill them all from the front here. 
And I think an explosive minigun would take care of that, but I might have also just made it too deep. Um, I made my best effort, but I decided to give up and try a different structure. So I started this one with a six by five square of cement or concrete foundations and a little pit inside. I actually didn't put flooring. I just left the dirt pit at the bottom. Um, that I thought would help with the fall damage a little bit because it wouldn't be as deep as having like full walls all the way to the floor. Uh, I set up the cages. Basically, I was able to get five cages on the long side and four cages on the short side. So I created like five, four, five, four, a total of 20 cages per layer. Uh, and it worked out okay. As you can see, if you do it right, you can kind of clip them into each other. And that one on the end, you just want the door hanging out. You don't need the whole cage to be exposed, just the door. So as long as the door is, you know, that's where they're going to come out of. So I can have the, you see, I have the door hanging over there and you can kind of push that little square thing into them. Uh, then I added another layer on top after wiring, of course, make sure you wire. And I started building another layer of gunner cages and I kept this going uh, layer by layer. And again, I wanted to have a hundred gunner cages. So by having 20 on each layer, I was able to do this in five layers, which is much, much taller than the other structure, but not nearly as deep. Um, so this was a test. I wanted to see how this would work and it ended up looking really nice. Actually, I like the appearance of this. It ended up pretty cool. Uh, yeah, nice looking structure. I was pretty proud of that. And uh, once I had everything set up and it all looked good, uh, I armed the cages, came back in a week, and I kind of have to circle around here a bunch of times. And what the circling does is it gives them, like they'll start shooting at me and then they'll eventually move a little bit and they'll fall down. I couldn't get them to move, so I just shot the ones that wouldn't move until they started dropping down. But eventually they all dropped down. And here's where I saw the problem. So I'm gonna switch over to my big boy here in a second and you'll see, actually I'm gonna fire my big boy down fire it in and I do a little pause here to show you the problem I fire and as you can see on the left lower left corner there's a ton of dead bodies so the fall damage is killing a huge amount and that's okay because I can still get their equipment but this is all about experience and I'm not getting any experience if they just die from fall damage without me interacting with them at all so I decided to try something a little different after this and I picked up the whole in enclosure, the whole thing, and I moved it over water. So now you see they're swimming in the water. They're, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, almost literally. They're swimming around in there and it works really, really well. I get all the experience. I don't, I don't think many die from fall damage unless they hit the wrong part where it's too shallow. And as you can see, they're all floating down there dead. And so basically I rearm the cages and I go down and repair all of them uh, layer by layer. And once I get to the bottom, uh, I'm able to get through and actually loot all their bodies. Now, technically I don't need to do that because I have a good water farm, but just to show you, I'll show you how I do it. You can just loot everything. And after I get done looting everything, I go to Good Neighbor and go to Cleo. I try to buy any mini nukes that she has and the shipments of copper. And then I steal her mini nuke. That respawns often, actually. So I have to go hide from her and then steal it. Arturo sometimes sells the uh, mini nukes, but he always also sells the shipments of copper. And, uh, whoa, that's weird. Anyway, I go to Smiling Larry and I buy mini nukes from him if he has them. Uh, missiles as well, sell all the weapons I have. Uh, I have another settler that looks like him that sells weapons as well. I put the same clothes on him and uh, sell all that. And then Trader Riley actually is amazing. She sells three uh, 50 supply of shipments of copper. So she's the best for that. And I think that's all I'm gonna show you today. You just keep doing this process again and again and you'll get a ton of experience. And that's my gunner farm. So until next time to survive in the wasteland, you gotta be efficient.